I wanted to make a quick video about getting these particular displays working on the ESP32. This is a, a ZJY-IPS130V2. Uh, got this on Banggood. This is a uh, ST7789 display. And you will see here, this one is a uh, 240 by 240 resolution. Immediately we come to the crux of this problem, and it doesn't matter what resolution these are, is the fact that we could see it's written clearly that the interface is SPI, as written on the back, and it is SPI to be sure. However, when we look at the pinouts on the front, we could see that the pinouts are in fact I squared C. So it really doesn't make any sense trying to wire this thing up. For comparison, here's a display with an I squared C interface, it's correctly labeled. So we're going to go through and see how to pin this out correctly, ignoring what's written on the front of it. Let's get started. The one I got from Banggood came with a header. I generally point out you should have stuff in a breadboard powered off before you make these connections. Ground is one of the pins correctly labeled, so we'll add that one now. The VCC connection will go to the 3 volt pin. No external power is necessary if you're just driving this board and nothing else. The pin which is labeled as SCL will go to D18 on the ESP32. And the pin labeled as SDA will go to D23. This is followed by RES, which will go to D4. And then DC, which will go to D2. Final pin blank is optional. If you want the screen to turn off, you can tie blank to ground. With this completed, let's take a look at the board. Everything is set up exactly as instructed. We can now apply power to the unit. Now I'm applying power to a defaulted ESP32. We can see as it turns on, also the backlit screen turns on. And to demonstrate the blanking, the BLK signal, I'm taking that black wire and I'm touching ground. So the next order of business will be to go to Tools under the Arduino IDE to Manage Libraries. When that opens under Filter Search, we're going to type in the name of the library we're going to use. And the one that we're going to be using is called TFT underscore ESPI. And we're going to select that one. Mine's already installed, obviously 1.4.20 at the time of this video. Click install and then close once it finishes installing. We'll be ready to continue onward. Now we're going to have to edit the user setup file to accommodate the device we're using. And regardless of the operating system you're using, you can go to the Arduino directory. And in the Arduino directory, there's a subdirectory called libraries. In that library directories, there's going to be that TFTP ESPI directory uh, for the library that was just installed. And within that directory, we'll see a file called user setups.h that'll be opened with your text editor of choice. And definitely read the comments. I'm just setting up a single instance, one device on an ESP32. There are more complicated settings. Uh, read the comments and learn how you could do more complicated tasks. Let's get underway. In this section, we're told to define only one driver. I choose the ST7789 underscore driver. There's an underscore two. I didn't try it. It's a minimal configuration. This is the one I went with. Works just fine. If you have an ESP32 and a 7789, it supports this feature as well. So I've enabled this one also. This next one talks about the correct color order. Only one of them works correctly. I tried the top one first and it didn't work correctly. I've left it on the top one so I could show you later how I made that determination. But if you're using this module like I have, you should be selecting the second one. Next is width and height orientation. I have a 240 by 240. So for width, I chose obviously 240 for that setting as shown here. And for height, I did the same thing. I also selected 240 for 240 by 240. Next part was for the ST7735, so I skipped over it and went right to section two. Scrolling past the initial commentary, the first thing we see is a uh, node MCU. We're not using that, so we'll just move past that. Next is 8266, not using that either. Also move past that as well. Finally make our way to uh, ESP32, and we could see all the pins that were set up physically on the board earlier before. And those are the ones that are drawn out here on these particular numbers, and all of these are defined. Reset also has the option of being tied to the board reset. Instead of a pin on the ESP32, I elected not to do that. You could do what you want, obviously, but this is how we're setting it up now. According to this, the backlight pin could also be set to a particular I.O. I didn't do that either. You just 
like I said, tied to ground as I showed in the example uh, to shut off the screen. At this point, I made my way all the way down to section three, which is fonts. I made no changes here. I left all of the fonts as they were defined. For section four, in setting up the SPI frequencies, I used default values that are shown here. I made no modifications. And I had no need to uncomment this use HSPI port, so I left this one alone. And this concluded the configuration. It wasn't too bad, so I saved it and I closed it. And now we can move on to the initial testing of the library. The first program we're going to run is from the diagnostic section, runs the library, reads the user config. So we're going to scroll down to TFT, ESPI, test and diagnostics, and click read user setup. It's a small program, not very complicated. I scroll through it right quick, show the extent of it. I'm going to push it right to this device and upload it. Like I said, there's not much there. It doesn't take very long. And once it's finished, we're going to open up the terminal and reset the device so we could see what the output is. And we can see that it shows all of the configurations that we did, plus some extra information, library version, the process of the frequency, uh, transactions flag, what type of interface, the driver, the resolution, uh, the pins that we're using for this particular device is also shown as well as the uh, font information and then we have some of the extra parameters below so now we'll move on to the next important configuration test make sure everything's working correctly from file again we're going to go to examples and then back down to tft underscore espi test the diagnostics and select the color test call test opens again another short program and we're going to execute this program we're going to push it to the device when this program is loaded there'll be no visual indication on the computer we're going to look to the device to see what the output is as we look at the display we can see that the indications for red and blue are labeled backwards so are the corresponding inversions we can see the aqua and the yellow are backwards so we're going to have to go in back into the config file and change that commented section. Let's do that now. So we're back at the config file where that area is defined for RGB or BGR. I did that before. I purposely set it wrong. And now I'm setting the second one to correct that issue. I then save the config file and re-push that test program to the device. We could see that the red and the blue are now in the correct order. Green never had a change. Also, the inversions are now correct for both of them as well. You will have a notice that the inversion flag is backwards. When it says inversion off, it's on. And when it's on, it's off. Uh, this wasn't overlooked. And I'll tell you that in the config, there's an option for this. And as I've tried to set it, I haven't seen uh, any change. This is where it's located. And it says to try each of these. And it should be some sort of effect as a result of trying them but I haven't seen any effect on each one so I'm just going to say there may be a bug and you're just going to have to set true for false or false for true when you're doing any program with inversions last one I'd like to do is the free fonts demo make sure the fonts are in working order also let's you know what the fonts look like I use the resolution for the demos 320 by 240 there's no 240 by 240 demo in this selection that's fine so I select all free fonts demo and when it loads up we could see the fonts are all just going to cycle through on the screen to give you an idea what they look like and this goes on for a long while I'm not going to display every one we'll just move to the next thing now and if you spend some time to look down the example section you'll find all sorts of examples and code that you can use and see the capabilities of these devices we look in test and diagnostics before but there are also others especially you'll find in the generic section as well as the resolution for the device you have again there is no 240 by 240 section i use the uh 320 by 240 up above here and there's a whole bunch of them in this one that'll display the capabilities of this device this one i like this one is called starfield we'll load this one quick that's pretty cool simple demo let's move on to a last one we'll end it here and this one's called meters. I could see that this one be pretty useful implemented in the design. Let's take a look. 
I think that's pretty cool. You can see it's using a, uh, a sine wave in the input in the demo. When you look at the bottom meters, you can see that. I think this pretty much wraps it up going through the demo there. And this is uh, how to implement the SPI interface 7789-driven uh, ZJY IPS 130 uh, V2.0 uh, display to the ESP32 with uh, the messed up pinout as it's uh, written on the board. I hope you found this useful, helpful, entertaining, give you some insight how to configure it with this library. Hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe. It helps me out a lot when you do. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?